Hello and welcome back. This is Insta30s and I'm continuing playing Unheard Voices of Crime. Last episode, well, it was a hoot. We managed to solve case of a theater setting and also who was Raven. So, interesting stories and I have no idea. Um, as I understand, this is probably the last mission on the main game. I think I should have one DLC case. There are, if I understand correctly, there are other DLCs, but they are not translated into English. So I'll have to check, but I'm guessing we have this case and then the DLC case. So two more cases, most likely. Anyways, let's dive in. The four events you just examined all happened in the past. Now, we need you to use the acoustic detective system to figure out a currently unsolved case. This one involves another explosion, only in a mental hospital, rather than a police station. It's... how should I put it? Mm, peculiar. A number of agents have already attempted to solve it. None of them succeeded. And there were... complications. Really? Okay, so those sounds okay. Uh, we have names: Elvira, Elvira, McMurphy, Mister Director, Ray, Maestro, Ooh, Spoon. Is there a spoon? I don't think there's spoon. James, Tony, Oscar, Jennifer, George, Nelly, Emily, and Clep. Who are the real mental patients? Who is ghost? Hmm. So. We have to deduce who are the real mental patients and who are not. And then this ghost fellow, whoever he might be, 15 minutes. So let's start. Hello, welcome in officers. How can I help you? I heard your siren. I'm Elvira. This is my partner. Are you in charge here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am the administrator of this facility. To what do we owe this visit? Yes, you look a little young to be running this place. Anyway, we're here to investigate reports of an escape. Uh, I'm guessing that guy is a Mr. Director. That he's too young to be a uh, administrator. Is this some sort of a joke that Mr. Director ends up being the mental patient? It's almost a running joke in some of the movies that cops or somebody or new uh, orderly or somebody comes to them asylum and uh, of course the first one who greets them they are they are like yeah welcome to the asylum i'm nurse or director or some doctor in here and uh, starts to show the places and then we find out that he's actually a patient maybe i don't know let's continue uh -huh. yeah about that we're dealing with it internally it's a minor incident not that big of a deal really not that big of a deal. This is a mental institution. Some of our patients are highly agitated, and a few from time to time attempt to escape. This one happened to be successful. We have people out searching. But often the patients return on their own volition after a day or two. How did it happen? This time, I mean. Hmm. Let me recall. I was... Ah, right. We were having a therapy session when the patient suddenly picked up an ashtray and hit me on the head. Then jumped out the window. Your head seems fine to me. Oh, it wasn't a heavy blow. And in this profession, you must be prepared for these sort of outbursts. Roar with the punches, as they say. Uh, truth be told, this situation is very embarrassing. Which is why I didn't want to call the police. You might not have called us, but someone did. You also confirmed that one of your patients escaped, which means we're now legally obligated to investigate. A psych case on the loose poses a threat not only to themselves, but to the public. Take us inside. 
We'll need to interview the other inmates. And get us their files. Interview? You want to talk to them? Where are the patients? Just show us the way and we can conduct the investigation ourselves. Well, if you insist. This way, please. Okay. Interesting. As a patient escape. Be careful of the glass on the floor. Ah, oh, okay. I need to see this patient's file. Ah, you mean patient number 68? Let's take a little bit. How did this window break? This is where the patient escaped. Be careful of the glass on the floor. I need to see this patient's file. Ah, you mean patient number 68? What do you want to know, officer? I've spent so much time with everyone here that I can practically recite their files from memory. Hold up. Why is this gate open? No Good question. to cover up how easy it is to slip out of here. All the doors are unlocked. Unlocked? Ah, yeah, that was me. I apologize. I was in such a hurry to greet you earlier, I forgot to lock it behind me. <laughs> I'm fairly certain that that guy is a patient. Way, though, I've been here the whole time. I can assure you that no one else escaped. Let's check inside. This is our day room. As you can see, all our patients are quite well cared for, wouldn't you say? Nice decor in board games doesn't change the fact that they're still stuck in a mental facility. Hey, hey new arrivals! Grab your clothes and toiletries! Huh? Who are you? <laughs> None of your concern. Pick your seat and sit down. I don't want any trouble. Who's this guy? Patient number 27 has a non-bizarre grandiose delusional disorder. He thinks he's a caregiver here. The hospital is short-handed, so we usually leave him be. Saves us from having to hire more help. People here are more nutso than I thought. Right. What's she doing? Watching TV. But the TV isn't even on. What's your name? Patient 42 suffers from severe social anxiety that manifests as selective mutism. She talks to no one. Neither of these two are going to be any help. Let's split up and canvas the rest of the place. Check the room over there, would you? On it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's follow Mr. Director then. Patience here. Oh God! Oh God! My stomach! I! I! I sorry! I! 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 I, I, hey. I gotta go. And just where do you think oh, you're sorry. going, pal? Sit back down. You can leave when I say oh. you can leave, which is after you've answered my questions. Okay. Okay. Whatever you say. Both of you, sit down and behave yourself. I want you to answer the officer's questions. Also, officer, I don't understand what you hope to gain by interrogating these patients. That's a nice costume you got there, officer. Pretty convincing, even. Your lines, on the other hand, have room for improvement. You can't start off that strong. You lose any sense of foreshadowing. Just makes the audience feel off. <laughs> We've nicknamed patient 49, Mr. Director. Uh, believe it or not. Wait, what? He suffers from something called the Truman Show delusion. In his mind, he's making a masterpiece. And we're all just actors. We rely on raw uh, therapy to treat patients like these. Uh, trying to interrupt or correct him will just get us nowhere. But if we play along, he'll calm down soon enough. Oh, right. Okay. Mr. Director, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Who are you, really? Look me straight in the eye. That's how you do it. Much better, much better. You gotta have a quiet sense of intimidation. You don't need a shout to be coercive. Go back and re-enter through the door. Let's shoot this scene again. What the hell? Please, officer, he meant no harm. Remember, I mentioned some of our patients are likely to initiate contact. Well, what about that one, huh? Mr. Bathroom Emergency. Was that real? Or just some excuse so he could leave? Him? <laughs> He's a thief. Hey! That, 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 that's defamation, you hear me? I'm a law-abiding citizen. Behave! 
patient number 36 suffers from an impulse control disorder commonly known as kleptomania. He simply cannot stop himself from stealing. Are you clept then? As a person or place. <laughs> I didn't realize sticky fingers were a disease. But he's already in here, so why'd he try to run? Old habits die hard, I suppose. This one was constantly being hounded by the police, arrested multiple times. The sight of you probably triggered a conditioned response from him. Uh, about that, Mr. Director, I was thinking more like a director of the place, not a movie director. So, yeah, I'm guessing. <laughs> My bad, but let's go with that. I'm fairly certain this guy would be Cleb. Maybe. I don't know. We will see. Just ask around. When did I ever get caught? Huh? <laughs> You're saying you never got caught? Then why did you end up here? Hmm? He was a repeat offender, you see. Always stealing old phones. The police found it so odd that they gave him a psychiatric evaluation. And wouldn't you know it? He was certifiable. So, instead of sending him to prison, they sent him here. Quite the nutcase, I see. Yeah, well, we are doing our best to treat them. Let's check the next room. Okay. The way I see it, Officer, this wasn't that big of an issue to Are you done, with. Tony? No. Why is this room locked? You're Tony, that then. Is the seclusion room. Open it. <laughs> I would strongly advise against that. Anybody in there? Who the fuck's out there? You get in here, you cocksucker! I'm gonna kill you! I'm gonna kill all of you! I must warn you. This patient might be dangerous. He suffers from episodes of acute mania and violent psychosis. I told you to open this door. Just do it. All right. All right. Just give me a second. I need to find the key. Which one was it again? Is this one? No, not this one. This will only take a second, I assure you. Really? Ah, here it is. Great. Open it up. I'll just wait. I'll... Who the flying fuck are you? I'm gonna straight up bash your fucking brains in. All right, I'm gonna need you to calm down, sir. You get that fucking duck away from me, you hear? He fucked me up. I can't think straight. I'm gonna slit his fucking throat, you hear that, huh, doc? Huh? I'm gonna fucking Hot murder duck. you. Tell the doctor he can leave, Elvira. Right. Uh... So, wait, we, we might as well listen to this, listen in this. We'll take it from here. You can leave now. I'm not sure how interviewing someone like him will help, but you're the police, not me. Just be careful. Okay, he's leaving. He's gone. It's safe to talk now. Damn, Tony, Tony, my man! Look at you in uniform. Could have fooled even me. Keep your voice down. Though, uh, I could say the same about you. You almost gave me a scare with all that crazy talk. What's it called again? Rabies, idiot. Elvira. Charming as always, I see. Jokes aside, what have you found? There's a whole lot of people out there that have got their eyes on Ghost's secret stash. You look around at all? Ah, uh, not much. Already talked to two patients. Crazy guy called Mr. Director and some thief. Gotta say, they both seem totally fucked up, to put it mildly. What about okay. you? Okay. Who did you talk to? Just some delusional reporter. Oh, and a schizophrenic called Silver Spoon. Just like you said, though. So there is somewhere here. Loony. Guess we're on the same page then. Wait, so you haven't found anything yet? So why'd you call us up here? I didn't see him, but I know where to find him. How really? so? Process of elimination. At first, I didn't know what to do. No one seemed to be faking it. But then I discovered seclusion room number four at the end of this very hallway. Never seen it unlocked, but I know someone's inside. Because the caregiver brings food there twice a day. So, 
I played the manic card, and I beat up a doctor named George, which got me thrown in here. Now, I can keep an eye on things from the privacy of right next door. And if all the other patients are legit crazy, whoever's in that room is ghost. I mean, the logic fits, right? Well, look at you, Sherlock McMurphy. All right. McMurphy? Time to see who's behind door number four. Get the key from the doctor, Elvira. Wait. Something doesn't add up. What about the escaped patient? Patient number 68. Could he be Ghost? Nah. Think about it. Why would Ghost want to get out? He got himself committed on purpose, remember? To hide from people who want his money and his life. He knows he's a dead man if he gets out. You have a point. Okay, I'll get the key. Well, this is getting interesting. Yeah, question. I'm gonna check. Little gown doesn't even have a pocket. Where'd you get the phone to call us? That, my friend, is courtesy of Klepp. You met him? He gave you a phone? Okay, yeah, he was Klepp. Is... How should I put it? He's definitely crazy. But man, oh man, can that fucker steal. <laughs> All he's gotta do is greet a doctor, and he's got their phone. No wonder he tried to get close to me earlier. Bumped into me, actually. In fact, wait, where's my phone? <laughs> yep. Jesus. Big time hitman got played by a small time thief. Hey, why'd you knock out George? What did he do? Was in the way. Wanted to see our search warrant. See if he's got the key on him. Okay, that guy's George then. And he was knocked out. Here, found them. <laughs> Tony and I'll check out room four. You clean this up. On it. Okay, what's in the room four then? Room four. Ah, uh, hell if I know. Maybe one of the bigger ones. Hello. We know you. Come on out already. What? There's no what? one in there. Empty. The escape them? Back there. What's going on here? Don't tell me our ghost made like a ghost. This doesn't make the any sense. Ghost is close. This room's at the very end of the hall. He'd have to go by my room to get out. And I've had eyes like a hawk on that door this whole damn time. Hell, I was still paying attention during that whole crazy act earlier. No, man. Something's not right. Look at the dust on the floor. Gotta be at least an inch thick. The only sets of footprints in here are yours and mine. No one's been in here for a long time. Well, I'll be damned. But there's no way in hell I was wrong. Let me check again. No one under the bed. Huh. What about this big chest here? You don't think he hid the money in it, do you? A chest? Wait, don't touch it. A trap! That fucker played us like a fiddle. Now he knows we're here. We need to pull out. Uh, and here I thought fiddlers stuck to roofs nowadays. You know, I'd much prefer you use that mental energy to get us the hell out of here. Oh, yeah. Okay, so... I can just waltz out of here looking like this. All we need is a little info. Tony, arrest him. We'll escort him right out of the building. Huh, good arrest? idea. That's much... We've got our man. Let's take. So that was a trap. Trap. Sick, I right, tell you. Hold on, Emily. Don't do this to me. Okay, I'm guessing that is Emily over there. Ah. Uh, so let's go here. You are Emily, then. Fine. What's happening here while we... Well, we could check what's... This is empty. We got a Georgie here. With someone. Anyone in here? No. No. So, what about here? 
two persons. Clip is moving around here. Mr. Director is by himself. Uh, two guys in toilet. Can I enter here? No one in here at the moment. Probably never. I'll hmm. I'll check what happens here before the cops enter. If anything. Absolutely nothing happens here. Okay. So. So this was empty, yes. What happens here then? Why is it you wanted me to meet you here, George? Actually, I wanted to ask you a favor, Maestro. Uh -huh. You're an expert when it comes to art, yes? I was hoping you could evaluate a painting for me. <laughs> You've come to the right person. Not to boast, but uh, a piece's price can increase considerably if I say good things about it. Of course, of course. Please, sit. The picture's right here. If you could just take a look. What is this? This isn't artwork. This is a map. Indulge me if you would. And listen to the music. Anything? There is something. Wait. Hmm. I need to... Uh... Get my thoughts straight. Uh, take your time. Okay, what is happening here? So what is the connection? We have Maestro, who have been earlier. Clip. What is the connection? What is what is going on here? <laughs> um, are you talking? Really? Tell me, what do you see? I see a, an interrogation. Yes, inside a police station. Who are the police interrogating? I don't... Oh, wait. Yes. I know this voice. Silver Spoon? What are they questioning Silver Spoon about? Something about drugs. It, drugs. Yes, I remember Silver Spoon mentioning this before. Excellent. Let's move on to the next picture. Uh, okay. Another one? What about the painting you said I was here to... Silver Spoon about drugs? Is that the um, first case we did? To evaluate. What's going on? What are you doing to me? Don't worry, Maestro. It's just a small test. One more picture, and we're done. Uh, uh, another map? Do you recognize this place? Well, this sounds familiar. They're point showing maps. We are looking maps. <laughs> mm, it looks familiar. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, an art gallery. Describe the art gallery for me. The second Missions. It's crowded. An exhibition will start soon. Wait. There's an empty frame? But why? Exactly. Why is that? Give me just a... a moment. No, no. It can't be that either. But then, who took it? The, the real painting. It's fine. 
take your time. Okay. <laughs> okay, here we are. So what's what's the great oh, reveal? It's Sean. Yes. <laughs> nice to see you again. Oh? And Ms. Reeves is here too. Well, those are familiar names. The painting was stolen. Someone stole my painting. No, no, that's not it. I had my own painting stolen. It, it was part of my exhibition. I spent so much time and effort on my painting. I would never let someone steal it. It was all part of my plan. <laughs> yes, the painting was retrieved in the end too. The lost art returned. Okay. Oh, I'm afraid your symptoms haven't improved. What are you talking about? Didn't you ask me to evaluate paintings for you? This was an evaluation, except it was a psychiatric one. We call it the thematic apperception test. What? A psychiatric evaluation? Yes. Tailor made for your symptoms. I also use role-play therapy to supplement the effects. Unfortunately, the results are far from promising. I... What's wrong with me, exactly? We used images to hypnotize you, allowing you to see and hear things from your past. Oh. When you saw an interrogation, you could remember the story Silver Spoon told you. The problem is... When you saw the image reflecting yourself, you weren't able to differentiate between delusion and reality. You sank further and further into your own fantasy story, allowing you to escape from the bleakness of your own reality. You staged the whole theft. Quite a coincidence, and a little too convenient, don't you think? George, doctor, what you said I don't quite understand. Don't worry about it. You know everything you need to know. Now, answer me one question. Who are you? I'm the ma... No. Who are you? No, I'm... Mm. Patient number 29. Yes. There you go. Perfect. Now, just make sure you keep taking your medication on time. And trust me, you will get better. All right. What is going on here? Okay. Patient 29 shows little improvement. If anything, his symptoms may be worsening. For situations with which he has an anecdotal connection, he is able to discern the projected narrative from reality. But in cases where he has direct experience, his ability to distinguish between the two is severely blurred. Prognosis remains guarded. I strongly recommend continued treatment with antipsychotic medications, as well as TAT and role-playing therapy to see if conditions improve. And we should schedule him for a full reassessment in six weeks' time. That role-playing therapy reminds me of Shutter Island. <laughs> anyway, so let's continue. So George leaves now. Then he meets Elvira. Why isn't the gate locked? That is a good question. Excuse me, Doc. I need you to turn over the key to room four. Huh? Who are you? How did you get in? I'm a police officer. We're here to investigate a case. Police? Who let you in? Do you have a search warrant? Of course oh, I do. sorry. Okay, yeah. Right sorry, I had a little problem there. The guy is missing, yes. 
Okay. Um, then we know. Okay, so what happens here now? You are coming in. James. You stay away from the gate. Get your ass back to the day room. For crying out loud. I give her, huh? I told you to stop. Where do you think? What the hell's going on? Why were the police here? Things are getting out of control. Okay, who are you? Just playing along with Mr. Director and the other crackpots, right? Figured if we really did take over the hospital, it'd be much easier to look for ghosts. No way, it's a coincidence. You notice anything off about those cops? Well, they were definitely looking for someone. That much was obvious. Who are you? But the way they were interrogating every single patient makes me think they're after ghost too. Why would the authorities suddenly be searching for him? Until we got that tip, everyone thought he was dead. Maybe they got it too. Anyway, what have you found so far? I haven't locked down Ghost yet, but I did find his plan B. Plan B? What is that? Pure coincidence, actually. The TV remote went missing, you see, and the button on the TV doesn't work either. It got me curious, so one day I volunteered to cover Ray's night shift. After everyone left the room, I opened the TV set. Guess what I found? A bomb. Bingo! Anyone turns that thing on, it'll explode. I bet that's probably why he took the remote. That's further proof it was Ghost who blew up the police station. To kill his wait, crew wait, and wait, his wait, death. wait, wait. Uh, Clip likes to steal things. So he's last here with Emily. I'm guessing he started the TV that caused the explosion. But the question is, I don't think the clip is ghost. That would be too easy. So we have to know who clip pumps, bumps and uh, steals the remote controller. Remote, remote control, maybe. But why would he plant another one in the same place he's hiding? That's why I said it must be his plan B. Sure, the hospital's been a safe place to lay low, but someone clearly knows he's still alive. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put a bounty on his head and we wouldn't be in here. Ghost probably planted the bomb for just such an occasion as this. He can blow the place sky high and vanish into the wind again. Poof! Sounds right up his alley. Anyone who sees his face dies. Not this time. <laughs> Check this out. What the hell is that thing? Looks like some kind of sci-fi gizmo. It's a microcontroller infrared scrambler. Got a right. catalog for $29.95. What? Batteries not included. I don't get it. This is my plan B. When Ghost tries to blow this whole place to smithereens, this thing will jam the signal from the remote. The TV won't go boom, and we grab whoever's holding the clicker. Now that's smart. Then all we have to do is cuff them and collect our reward before the cops swoop in and steal all the credit. Huh? Okay. Is that alarm? What the hell? I didn't even know this hospital had an alarm system. Stupid cops. They probably triggered the trap that Ghost set up. Fuck. Months of work down the drain. Okay, that, yeah. Ghost is gonna have to make a move now. So let's go nab the son of a bitch. All right, I'll follow your lead. The day room is the best place to start. He ain't in the library or the exam rooms, so he'll have to come through there before he can escape. Okay, Clep is going to the Emily. That thing on before you can watch it. <laughs> There's this thing What's called... You're holding, Emily. No, Emily, stop! <laughs> So, Emily was holding the remote, yes, but where did she get it? Did Clep give it to her? Hey, Emily, you gotta turn that thing on before you can watch it. <laughs> There's this thing called a You're remote. Holding, Emily. Don't do this to me! So, either Clep gave the remote or Emily got it from someone. 
But Emily is staying all the time there. So I'm fairly certain it would be Clep who gives it to him, maybe? I don't know. There's two guys in here and two guys in here. Let's see what these do. Nelly. Nelly. What's your right? Huh? What's going on outside? I heard a bunch of people talking, but then it went quiet. Ah, that was Mr. Director telling us about the test. He said we got to take over the hospital so we can put a stop to it. Also, something about, you know, how the doctors are all actors, and we're really... Shut up! He told us not to tell anyone, didn't he? Whatever. Okay. <sighs> Look, you upset her. It's all your fault. I told you to shut up! DID? Divided Identity Disorder, hey, if hey, I... Hey, Nelly, don't be mad. What's your right? Seriously. You wouldn't understand even if I told you. I know what she's writing. Oh, yeah? And how the hell would you know, huh? You ain't her. Well, you ain't me either. How do you know I don't know? Exactly. I ain't you, so I don't know if you know or not. But you certainly ain't her, so you don't know squat, you big ignoramus. Silver spoon. Oh, ah. so you finally decided to talk to me, huh? Do you know who you are? I'm, uh, me, I guess. <laughs> no, you aren't. I'm me. For once, think before you answer. It's not easy. That's why Mr. Director's so terrified about the test. Wait, you know about the test too? Why wouldn't I? It's called TAT, and it involves a series of repeated questions that try to get the test subject to make up a logical story based on their own desires, emotions, motives, and personal experiences. Are we doing that? Most participants end up projecting their own subconscious onto a character in the made-up story without even realizing it. <laughs> so, that's what it is. Doesn't sound like such a big deal to me. Yes, and it wouldn't be if it were just that. The problem is, this hospital is doing more than just a simple test. Something much more... intense. Huh? Like what? They put extreme pressure on the test subjects causing them to lose themselves in the stories they make up. Even once the test is over, they lose track of reality, which can lead to the development of multiple personalities. And those whose minds are already weak, they lose track of who they are altogether. Textbook delusional right there. Ha! <laughs> well, I'll be. No wonder Mr. Director's about to shit his shorts. Don't concern me, though. Oh, well. yeah? <laughs> then how about this scenario? Deep down, you, me... All of us constantly struggle with our own issues. Pretty normal, right? Yes. Well, during the test, people tend to project those conflicting thoughts onto different characters in the stories they make up. Each thought becomes its own character, constantly engaged in a bitter back and forth argument with its other half. Until finally, they lose the ability to become one again. That's impossible. Wait, is she talking about us? I'm calling BS! Hey, don't look at me. I'm not the one running the tests. I just wanted to let you know to be prepared. And more importantly, don't forget who you are. Now I'm actually kind of intrigued. Sounds a little, I don't know, fun. No one's ever been able to give me a run for my money before. Okay, oh, what do you know? It sounds like some kind of, I don't know, metaphysical test. Metaphysical, my ass! It's a scam, pure and simple. And you can't bullshit a bullshitter. I am unscammable. Oh, shut up. I need to think. Think it never did you any good. Metaphysical. Ha! <laughs> Whatever. Ooh, I'm gonna hit the hay. Okay. Melly seems... quite knowledgeable. She might not be a patient at all. Maybe. So what else happening? Spoon is out. Alvira coming in. Are both of you patients here? Yes. Speak for yourself. I ain't no lunatic. But you are. I told you I ain't. What's going on here? Are you okay? It was my older brother. He has mental problems. Shut up! I'm as sane as ever! You're the crazy one! I'm crazy? Uh, sorry, officer. I was talking to my brother. All right, then. Ma'am, 
Mind if I ask what you're in here for? I'm a reporter. Before you got sick, you mean. I actually did want to know what it was that got you committed. Are you a police officer? Yeah. Then will you believe the things I'm about to tell you? Depends. Let me hear them first. I'm a reporter. A few months ago, I received a tip saying this hospital was conducting some kind of clandestine experiments on its patients. I disguised myself and checked in to investigate. I've collected all the information I need, but now I can't prove I wasn't sick in the first place or that I've recovered. So I'm stuck here with no way to publish my findings. What exactly have you found? Here, they use a treatment method on their patients called TAT, thematic apperception test. But it's not the TAT most people know today. Rather, they use the prototype used back during World War II. Basically, it brainwashes people. After the test, patients' memories will be completely erased, and they're conditioned as well. They're programmed to respond to certain sounds, after which they'll follow any command. The hospital then goes on to claim they've been cured, but the truth is, they're nothing more than soulless robots. Tell me, officer, if you were a patient, would you want to be cured that way? You've absolutely got to get me out of here. I have to expose them. Check my notes. Actually, I'm guessing Nelly's n Nelly's telling the truth. It feels like it, and it would probably follow the team, maybe. I've got all the evidence right here. I gotta say, that sounds more like a sci-fi flick than reality. All right, let me see your notes. Wow, don't skimp on details, do you? Let me ask you something else. You ever notice any patients in here who seem like they don't belong? Like they're faking their illness? Yeah, me. And besides you? Honestly, from what I've seen, at least 44% of the patients here are actually sane, but they've been committed regardless. Makes me think this hospital's next step is to experiment on normal people. That's quite the theory. What about him, huh? Seems pretty legit. Schizophrenia, maybe. He's sick, but it's not schizophrenia. You made a mistake any layman would make. What he has is called dissociative identity disorder. That's where you have multiple personalities. In his case, two. A oh, dissociative Huge difference between that and schizophrenia. <laughs> I see. That I'll have to remember. Wait just a second. Aren't you getting me out of here? Afraid I can't. At least, not yet. I'll come back once our investigation wraps up. Right. You don't believe me either, do you? Well, it's not about believing or not, because she is not who she claims to be. So what is happening here? These guys are... are this... Okay, Nelly comes in. So what are they doing here? Hmm. The hell is going on? They're just sitting there. I'll have to check what Mr. Director and the other guys talk here, but first things first, I want to know who these guys are. They're just... well, that's awkward or weird. Wait a minute. Okay, somebody just started drilling, so I'll have to see if I cut the parts where it drills off. Let's hope he would be fast. Anyways, these guys doing what? Uh, okay, it's starting. Be right back. Okay. Wait, what is that? Is that a sign? They're knocking. Yeah, but why?
So what the hell? What are you guys doing? Okay, Nelly's coming in. Who's that knocking? Ray, what are you doing here? Who did this to you? I'll explain everything later. Quick, untie me. I can do that, but only on one condition. Just but say it. Wh whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Within my power, of course. You need to prove to everyone else that I'm not crazy so I can get discharged. Consider it done. I knew you weren't crazy a long time ago. Perfect. Who are then you, you then, Ray? Out of here. Well, I I'll do my best, but, but remember, I'm just a caregiver. The doctors are the ones who have the final say. Oh, speaking of doctors, Jennifer's in the room next door. We gotta save her, too. Dr. Jennifer? Jennifer? <laughs> Doctor? Doctor, wake up! <clears throat> Where am I? What happened? Someone apparently knocked you out. Got some blood on you there. I remember that much. But why am I in the bathroom? That is a good Can't question. There. Wait, you went out cold, Ray. What happened? Huh? huh? Hey, what are you... Uh, Ray! What the fuck? You killed her! She'll what? be fine. Anyway, better her than us, right? What are you even talking about? What's going on? Okay, so here's what happened. While you were treating patient number 68 earlier, you remember that, right? I was talking with James. The two of us heard this loud noise all of a sudden, so, so I went to check. Turns out 68 broke the window and took off. By the time I came to check up on you, you were already out cold. I had this cracked ashtray next to you, too. This got me all in a panic. So I didn't notice that the gate to the inpatient sector wasn't locked. Next thing I knew, a bunch of patients had all gotten out. They they charged me, tied me up, and threw me in the bathroom. Then then they dragged you in after I was tied up. Jesus Christ. Then Nelly was in on this too? She doesn't really strike me as the violent type. I don't know about that, but I'm not taking any risks. They're all crazy. Ray is a bit suspicious. He's not a patient, but... He's a bit suspicious. Who knows what they're capable of? But what is it they're trying to do? And why didn't you call the police when you had the chance? Everything happened so fast. One second, I was trying to figure out what happened to you. The next, those psychos jumped me. Huh? Where's my phone? Don't tell me they took it. Oh, wait. Oh. God damn it, it's gone. What? What? <sighs> Not my phone, something else. Uh, uh, oh no. Uh, you know, caregivers aren't allowed to bring phones inside the hospital. You know, that's the rule here. So what did you what lose? Stupid? What do we do now then? We can't even call the police. How many people did you see in here earlier? Don't tell me everyone is in on this. Uh, I saw Clep, Silver Spoon, Oscar, oh right, and Mr. Director. I'm telling you, it was chaos. There might have been more of them. I don't know. And all of them working together? They're not even suffering from the same illness. This is certainly a first. What do you think they're trying to do? Escape? Uh, they, they took the keys, but as far as I know, they haven't left. All I could tell was that Mr. Director seemed to be the ringleader. Something about m manipulation and brainwash. Then it's okay. a coup? A coup? Yeah, they want to take over the hospital. That's why they didn't escape. You haven't seen George, have you? No. Maybe he's still in the treatment room? Is that an alarm? Yes. Probably somebody's alarm clock. I wouldn't worry about it. Really? Then what do we do? It's only a matter of time before they find us here. Honestly, I think the two of us could hold them off. Clep, he's basically a stick. Oscar's a wuss. Silver Spoon's lucky if he isn't fighting himself. And Mr. Director, he's an old man. The only reason they got the jump on me last time was because they, they caught me off guard. But you and I, we'll have the element of surprise next time. Why don't we just sneak into the director's office and use the landline to call the police? Hey, good idea. Come on, 
Let's go. Stay calm. We've okay. Got this. You are looking around. Just stay quiet and fall. Interesting. I'm starting to be a little suspicious about Ray. So what happens? So one, where's the one guy who we haven't named? He should be the Oscar. He is here. They are looking for ghost. These are looking for ghost. Nelly could be a sane person. George is a sane person. Jennifer and Ray are sane. These are not. Neither is Emily. So what is happening here? Ray was worried. He lost something very important, which wasn't a phone. And we know it's a remote that controls the TV. I'm starting to think Uncle Ray Ray here is the ghost. Maybe. So let's follow Director and Clip. Actually, what is Clep doing here at the moment? Hey, Big Murphy! Big Murphy! 300 bucks! Pay us! Or what? Oh, I know, I know. I've got to wait till after I get out. i got no money in this shithole. Hey, you want to do business with me? You do it my way. That means no credit. I already made an exception letting you try out the phone. And now that you know it works, you got to pay us. Unless you want me to tell Jennifer you stole her phone. Don't be a rat. Snitches right, get deep stitches. I can live with that. Hand it over. Wait. Before you leave, do you know if they caught Casey on this situation yet? The one who escaped? Uh, nope. Not as far as I know. What about the police? They here yet? Now that you mention it, Mr. Director did say he heard a, uh, a siren earlier. Ah, no, 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 no hard feelings, huh? Uh, next time, if you got money, we can do business. Okay, so clip, clippity, clip, clip. What took you so long? I, I got a business deal. You're next. All taken care of now, though. Business deal? I told you to lock those two in the bathroom. That's uh, uh I, I did, I, I did. Don't, don't, don't worry. But, uh, but what, what about George, huh? Take care of Jennifer and Ray, but leave George? Shouldn't we lock him up too? George is conducting one of those brain goggle sound experiments on the maestro. If we interrupt them, there's a chance we'll fry our friend's mind. Fine, well let him be for now. But what if the police decide to barge in there later? I've made arrangements. Oscar will try to send him away. Should he fail, he'll lead the police to us. When that happens, I need you to give a winning performance. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. I may not be an actor or anything, but I'm an ace at improv. Hey, well, now what hit him? Perfect. First, we'll take control of the hospital. Then, we'll rescue Maestro. Seriously, though, that test Maestro went to, what's it all about, huh? You guys keep saying he's fucked. What the hell did I do to him in there? I didn't know much about it myself until I spoke to Nellie. She calls it a thematic apperception test. Ah. T-A-T? T -A -T? What's with all the acronyms nowadays? <laughs> I can't hardly tell what the hell something is. Do we even know it's legit? Do you know Nellie? She throws doctor mumbo-jumbo like this around all the time. Full of shit, if you ask me. Who's to say she's not just making shit up on the fly? You really gonna believe a windbag like her? On this matter? Yes. It's like I told you already, this isn't a real hospital. No, this is nothing more than a reality show. And the reason you don't remember <laughs> is for exactly this reason. The test. That TAT has brainwashed all of you. You don't even remember who you really are. Brainwashed? The hell? Yes, all of us. All We've of us. participants in this theater verite. Over time, the rest of the crew, the true evil behind us, manipulated our gray matter using these so-called tests they made us believe we were mental patients mental patients fortunately my experience as a director allowed me to see through their wiles and maintain sure, my sure. true sense of reality 
A professional like me can spot an amateur from a mile away. No <laughs> wonder those doctors keep telling me I'm sick. <laughs> these doctors, they used these tests to toy with our brains, giving us all sorts of wild hallucinations. Once our heads are adequately scrambled, they give us a new identity. By doing so, they keep us trapped in this never-ending reality show, day by day losing more of our hold on reality. In short, the doctors aren't real doctors, and we aren't real patients. We're... This is an interesting game. Hard to speak while you need to actually concentrate and listen. But uh, let's continue. Nothing but actors in this twisted, cruel production. We're the actors? I thought Oscar was the only actor in this place. Okay, we know what happens there. I, 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 down. Okay, give yourself. Okay, we know what happened here. Lines on the other four. Leave it. Soon as to shut up the. Hey, the pepto me a disease. The sight of you probably certify. Let's check the next room. Okay, so what is happening now? I'm more interested in what happens here or anything. Ray lost something. Cop should have moved on by now. You want me to take a look, Mr. Director? No, you should stay here. Oscar will handle everything. Yeah, but something don't feel right. That cop from earlier felt like he was checking if we were crazy or not. I mean, for real crazy. You think the hospital sent them? Hmm, you may be onto something. Ooh. After all, everyone in this hospital, barring us, of course, was sent by the hospital. They're all part of the masquerade. No wonder he acted so weird. The only thing a cop ever gave me before were a pat down and a pair of cuffs. None of those weird questions. Good that we got you on our side to see through his disguise. Yeah, that's good. I was about ready to piss my pants. Honest to God, you know how I feel about five O's. Real cops, fake cops, none of it matters. This hospital wants to drive us crazy, literally. Maybe we should simply play along. Once the day's over and we've taken control of this place, the truth will finally be revealed. Indeed. And let me go check it out. If they're gone, we can get started with the plan. Hush, what did I just tell you? For now, we lay low. Boring. Okay, I think Oscar should come in. I do. How was I doing, Mr. Director? Like a real professional, yeah? It was an exceptional performance. Not only did you deliver your lines with passionate bravado, your improvisation was on point. Always adjusting your lines and tones to correspond with the other actor's delivery? You truly are a master thespian! Yeah, well, <laughs> you didn't have to give me such a hard time! Sorry. Occupational hazard. Once I get in character, I'm no longer reciting lines. I am the character. Now, I don't like to brag, but <laughs> that wasn't even the best performance I ever given. For most of my roles, I've done months of research. If I had more time, I'd have checked myself into a real mental hospital for at least six months. Stanislavski's system pushes me to fully embody my characters by learning how they really live. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, what about the cops? Have they left? Good thing you heard the siren and figured out a plan quick. If you hadn't sent me out there to stall them, God knows what they would have found by now. What are they even investigating? The runaway patient? Yeah, that's what they said. But, at least to me it seemed like that was just a cover-up. They didn't even check out the room where number 68 escaped. They barely even looked out the window, too. Nope. Both of them went straight to the patient rooms. You don't think they're looking for Jennifer? Could they be on to our plan? At first, that's what I thought too. But now, not so sure. Seemed more like they were going around looking for someone sane. Oscar is in, in, interesting. He's playing these guys, but he's obviously in cahoots with James trying to find the sh ghost, not shadow. I was thinking... Well, ghost, shadow, whatever. Yeah, they've lost their minds as well. Looking for sane people inside a mental hospital? Cops are a bunch of idiots anyway. 
I'm gonna go out and check again. I'll let you know. Okay. I'll go check room one as well. Let's go. Don't wait for me. Okay, you are going here now. Stop following me. Did you talk to the police, Silver Spoon? I did. I did too. Did you notice anything strange? That lady cop had a real attitude. Kept saying I had schizophrenia. Well, you've got it. You're a complete schizo. Don't interrupt me. Just, just stop talking already. Both of you are giving me a headache. The cop that questioned Silver Spoon was a chick, Mr. Director. That means there's more than one of them. You think they're on to us? Maybe we change the plan? Make a run for it while we still can? I mean, the gate is wide open. No, the show can't end like this. Don't you want to know the truth? After all this time, the lies, the manipulation, don't you crave retribution? Lies ain't the half of it. They probably want to steal my company while I'm not there too. Your company? When did it become your company, huh? Oh, shut up about your stupid company. No one cares. Yeah, well, either way, it's time for the doctors here to pay up. Right you are about that. Our plan is already in motion. With the doctors under our control, all we need to do is wait for the police to leave. Then this hospital will be ours. Yeah, well, I <laughs> still don't get how the police knew to show up at just the right moment. You know, someone must have ratted on us. Hmm, you make a good point. Who could have called the police then? George? Nah, he was already in with the maestro before any of us even did anything. Probably doesn't even know what's going on. Jennifer, then? Well, this could turn out bad for us. If the cops were to search the bathroom. Jennifer, no, I can't be her. I, I stole a phone. What? I thought I told you to lock her up, not steal her phone. Give it here. <laughs> hmm. Recent calls. Okay. Well, the last call she made wasn't to 911. Why don't we try calling? You can't just do that. We don't know who it'll call. Wait, Clap is ringing? Oh, right, because he stole... What are you looking at me for? ...towed his phone. Hand it over. And whose phone is this, hmm? <laughs> From that stupid cop earlier. Uh, but you know what? I here's what's really weird. Who calls a cop directly rather than 911? You stole this from the police? Yes. How many other phones have you stolen? Uh, I, 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 I don't got any more phones, but, but I, I do have this. <laughs> you are a real piece of work. Why would you steal a TV remote? Got oh. Ray earlier. It, it, it oh. Looks like a phone oh. Remote. Okay, we know all right. We know what happened here. Which part of stick to the script don't you understand? If you would have just followed your lines, you wouldn't have run the risk of getting us all into trouble. Now, if the police come back here, our plan is ruined. All our efforts down the drain. I'll keep the doctor's phone for now. You return both of those, but don't get caught. But I, I never learned to, to, to return stuff. Make it happen. All right, all right. That's odd. We've been here for a while now, but there's been no sign of Nellie. There was some kind of weird sound earlier. So she yeah. had to check. Probably went to the bathroom. It was indeed the wait. To the bathroom, you said? Really? Okay, now we know. Uh good let's start answering. We know Ghost is Ray. Ray had the remote control. It was his backup. He wasn't as a patient, he was an orderly or something like that. But the mental patient, real ones. Um uh, Mr. Director, I would say, Maestro, Spoon, Clap. Huh. And Emily, of course. Because I'm almost certain Nelly's talking to... Tr uh, speaking the truth. Uh, Oscar could be bought. Uh, he's playing both sides. He's out uh, trying to find Ghost, aka Ray, with James. James is also play playing. I'm fairly certain it's like this, but I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. 
I don't know. Let's try. Oh, really? Excellent work, detective. I have just one last question for you. So what's... We are in... We are the patient. I have just one last question for you. We are the patient. Who are you? Oh. Uh. Okay. I need the number sixty-eight. Uh. Uh, oh. Well, he's been talking as a detective. Let's go with detective. I don't know. Answer. Yes. Congratulations, detective. You passed. The final test. Okay. By now, you've probably realized the last case was mixed with some of the voices from previous ones. It threw the other testers into a state of deep confusion, but you didn't lose yourself like they did, which means you are now qualified to call yourself a true acoustic detective. Since you've mastered the system, you can take it with you. You never know when it might come in handy. And if you hear any residual voices or auditory hallucinations, I trust you'll master those too. In time. That concludes the exam, detective. Thank you again for participating. It exceeded all of my expectations. You're free to leave whenever you like. Okay, so... Oh, we can leave through, through the door. So that's an interesting idea. Are we actually a detective or is this actually the... <laughs> hospital? Are we a mental hospital? Are we actually a patient? Uh, I don't know. Maybe we get different endings when we're choosing different answers. Uh, don't know if I can go and back because there's no... Saving it's all auto save. Let's see what happens if I when I click the door. Thank you again for participating. It exceeded all of my expectations. You're free to leave whenever you like. Okay. Where are we exactly? Who are you? Hey, buddy. Oh, come on, it's me. State your name. You don't recognize your old Jesus. pal? Call me. What the hell, Sergeant? You fucking me. We're I'm a law writer. Ask him the basics. You're next. <laughs> well. Right. Well, I'm gonna skip these, uh, so I'll see you in the main menu. Okay, I'll take down the... Oh, somebody's... Uh... Reeling, be right back. Okay, hopefully he ended. Um, uh, I'll do the DLC on this, but I'll take my... Uh, well, I'll already... Say a little bit about this game. It's actually an interesting game. Oh, for okay. Hopefully it ended. Um, indeed, uh, interesting gameplay. Uh, the problematic, of course, is that I can't really make commentary all the time because I have to listen in, and of course let you listen in, and there's no subtitles, of course, that 
subtitles could be helpful, but that's again. Um, definitely interesting gameplay. Uh, I somehow thought um, other noises would play in for the investigation also, not just the discussions. Uh, maybe someday we will have an unheard two uh, with discussions and other sounds. Of course, with the other sounds, there are problems that how to interpret it, interpret that, those, but uh, interpret those. Uh, but uh, it would be still quite interesting to see how it works. I'll have to say it's been quite an interesting game. So I'll jump in the DLC if I have that little script so i'll try that and um okay oh this is a quite long one uh i'll probably do another recording for this because it's 21 minutes i did well i should have realized it's a dlc so uh i'll do this on a separate uh, part so we don't have that long episodes anyways i hope you enjoyed this and uh, we will see you hopefully in the dlc part and i'll be well i'll be soon starting to record it after i end this so anyways i hope you enjoyed this episode and i will see you next time until then goodbye